One of the tools that the Fed has at its disposal to control the economy is the interest rate. When the economy is rising too fast, the government intervenes and raises interest rates to stop the flow of capital into the market so that the economy doesn't turn into a bubble. Because high interest rates means borrowing money becomes expensive, which means less people would borrow money, which will result in less spending. And vice versa. That's known as monetary policy. So back in 2000s, when the dot-com bubble burst, the stock market lost almost $5 trillion of market cap. The economy was in a recession, so the Fed lowered interest rates from around 3% to 2.5%, then to 2%, all the way down to as little as over 1% to encourage everyone to borrow money and spend in order to get back the economy on its knees. And it worked! By 2003, the economy began recovering. By 2006, the stock market reached its pre-dot-com crash levels. But low interest rates means low rate of return on government bonds and interest on fixed deposits. It no longer made sense for investors to buy government bonds or keep their pile of cash in the banks, since inflation would slowly eat it away, especially when a few years ago they made unbelievable returns during the dot-com bubble. The S&P 500 rose by over 400% from 1995 to 2000. So investors were looking for a new opportunity a safe and rising investment to throw their money at, and real estate seemed like a great idea. But investors don't have the time to deal with individual buyers, so financial institutions came up with a brilliant idea. Since interest rates were so low, everyone was buying a house. So financial institutions would take these mortgages, bundle them together, and sell them to investors in forms of shares. These investments proved to be really great. But banks ran out of financially responsible people to loan mortgages, but investors still wanted to buy these investments. So banks started giving subprime mortgages, or mortgages to people with really low credit scores. People didn't necessarily have enough income to keep making the mortgage payments. Why? Because they would take these mortgages, bundle them together, and sell them to investors. Low interest rates and rising home prices kept attracting more and more investors. The reason why these investments appeared so seductive is because the investors argued that even if they would default on their loan, it's not a big deal. The bank can take back the house and sell it, and since home prices were rising, they would still make a profit. It seemed like the perfect investment. So the banks gave mortgages to everyone. That inflated home prices to unbelievable heights, but at some point, one of the borrowers defaulted. So his home was put on sale, then the second one, then the third. Soon, there were so many homes on sale, but not enough buyers, and home prices began to fall. When people saw that their $500,000 mortgage house is suddenly worth only $250,000, it stopped making sense for them to keep making mortgage payments, so they walked away from them. Now, there were even more houses on sale, driving home prices even lower. So the banks were left with a lot of worthless mortgages that no one wanted to buy, so they went bankrupt one after another. 